Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective. And today I'm going to talk to you about the woman who features on the $5 note, Queen Elizabeth II. But instead of talking about an overview of her life, I'm going to talk about her first official visit to Australia as the Queen. In 1954, Queen Elizabeth II was the first reigning monarch to visit Australia. That means that in the 166 years prior, since the British had stuck their Union Jack in the soil without a treaty and claimed ownership of Australia, this was the first time that a king or queen had bothered to pop down under for a visit. So, of course, it was a big deal. And you can imagine that in a time before TV, this visit would have been huge. Every state pulled out all stops to improve the young 27-year-old newly crowned queen. In fact, both my mum and father-in-law have vivid memories of participating in the celebrations. My mum was eight years old when the queen visited and she was one of 17,000 children who performed for the queen at the Melbourne cricket grounds. There was a gymnastics display, a maypole dance and my mum was dressed as a fairy in a junior pageant section called the toy shop. The newspaper described it like this. Thousands of gollywogs, fairies, clowns and toy soldiers played out the antics of the little people who live in the land of dreams come true. I do want to point out that there is no way that it would be acceptable for children to dress as gollywogs now. If you don't know what that is, it is a problematic type of doll that was popular in the early 1900s that was modelled after a person in blackface. They are not acceptable as toys now, but clearly in the 1950s, it seemed appropriate for a local primary school to dress up a bunch of children in blackface for the Queen. One thing a country has to think about when the royal family decides to visit is how much this visit is going to cost. A Queensland newspaper published a breakdown of the figures for just this state. It was more than £61,000. The costs included decorations, lights, Parliament House functions, luncheons, accommodation, printing, transport and sound systems. That is about three million Australian dollars in today's money. These visits are jam-packed. The Queen and the Duke are go, go, go from morning till night for their entire visit. Their Queensland itinerary went something like this. Wednesday, Brisbane. Thursday, both Bundaberg and Toowoomba. These towns are more than 400 kilometres apart. Friday, Townsville, a further 1,500 kilometres away, and then to Cairns on Saturday. And at every place, there were presentations, ceremonies, luncheons, and of course, hordes of children showing off their rhythmic exercises and physical drills. I'm tired just thinking about this schedule. Imagine the amount of crowd waving she had to endure. The Queensland Police Museum has some interesting photos of the police escorts through Brisbane, down Queen Street no less. What is most interesting is that the mounted police were wearing helmets, but the motorbike police were not. It was a different time, I suppose. Because the first television broadcast did not happen until six months after the Queen had visited, if you happened to miss out on being a part of the crowd, a 70-minute motion picture was made about the visit and you could go to the cinema to watch it, although critics of the film said there was not enough attention paid to agriculture. The National Film and Sound Archive have published the film on YouTube and I have to disagree with the critics. There was quite a bit of footage of sheep and cows. During the royal tour... The Queen visited 57 towns and cities in 58 days. But it wasn't just Australia she visited. On her way here, she popped into Bermuda, Jamaica, Fiji, Tonga and New Zealand. And on her way home, she swung by the Cocoa Islands, Ceylon, Aden, Uganda, Malta and Gibraltar. The whole tour took six months and although the Queen and Duke met tens of thousands of children, their own children who were five and three years old at the time, did not come on the trip. Don't forget to hit subscribe and in the description below you'll find a link to my website where you'll find a list of references and links to teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on The Case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.